Yeah, I miss my sister Gladys, Cabin Gumpa. From the day I was born, I walked and talked with her, went walk about out in the bush. Show me the Aboriginal way. I miss her, but I thank her for what she done for the five clan of Arakon. She'd been raised in that mission at Arakoon, and that made her tough and very keenly aware of the injustice that she'd suffered. She said to me, Sis, we need our land. There is future for our young ones. I'll follow it right through to the end, no matter how tough it's gonna take. Gladys was a community woman, but she'd come all the way down who was fighting the fight in the city. We felt that she spoke not just for her people, the WIC people, but also for every remote community wondering why their situation is so dire in a lot of cases. Through native title, reconciliation, this is for you and the law of the WIC. She moved in both wells, my sister Gladys. She know about the white men's society and also the Aboriginal way. She was afraid of no one. Absolutely fearless and honest. Brutally honest. <laughs> but I'm glad it's anyway. I'm the hot woman. I'm the fire. The bushfire is my totem, all right? I'm always thinking about those old people, you know? Everyone knows them as the strong, weak people who stood up for our rights. The very few that are trying to stand up for our rights today, that's who we go back to. You know, we always imagine them, how strong they were, how united they were. That's what makes us keep our heads up high and never give in. The High Court has decided by majority today that it is possible for native title rights to coexist with the rights of pastoralists. It is, to me, an historic moment as a weak woman. I am not afraid of anything. You don't have your land. You have nothing to live for. She didn't actually realize how hard the case was going to be. When you live in two worlds, in different societies, it's like a rope with a tug of war. It's hard. 